Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a very, very special edition of Finding Me Today on the ITV networks. This interview consists of two parts and I have to be very honest right at the outset that the guests here today with me are very special to me and so I'm very biased towards them for the simple reason that I have learned much from them and the engagement with them has been phenomenal. It is for this reason that I have invited them to the studios today and have also considered the possibility of doing this interview over to parts. So with that, I would like to go straight to the very warm welcome and to say, you know what, I'm thrilled to have you here because I think it's going to be an exceptional interview. Of course, just considering the red t-shirt and what it stands for already, we'll start raising a lot of questions. But first, let me start with you. First I have with me is Joel Madire. He's a lecturer in legal philosophy at the Faculty of Law, University of Pretoria. Welcome, Joel. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then it's Alfred Maraca. You're a lecturer in jurisprudence at the Faculty of Law at the University of Pretoria. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Alfred, and I love the hairstyle. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> and then with me is Jaco Olofsu. Jaco, you're the secretary of the EFF Student Command at the University of Pretoria. Yes. And you're also finally a political and philosophy student. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the range is uh, quite extensive here, and I think that we're going to have a lot to talk about. But of course, the issues are very, very poignant, and they're quite serious in some mm -hmm. way. But the first thing I think we need to set the ground straight is that you are the future of South Africa. You're the young academics that are coming together, meeting at informal coffee shops, through book clubs and readings, mm -hmm. and you're trying to engage with the literature and of course with each other's minds to bring forth those discourses that are not often or easily accessible, especially in the way in which education and knowledge is controlled. Mm -hmm. So. Let's start at the starting point. Mm. And I think, Joel, I'd like to start with you because, I mean, you educated me phenomenally and the whole discussion on transformation. What does it mean to you and how do we understand transformation in the context that we are in? In the university context? Yes. Um, yeah, in the, in the discussion I've had, I, I've been thinking about different ways in which people talk about transformation. Mm. Um, the one understanding of transformation I've always found problematic is transformation is simply cosmetic. It's about changing names, it's about giving buildings African names, black names, and, and so forth. Um, I've also had a problem with the notion of transformation as simply the changing of interpersonal relations. Mm. For me, transformation in a university context will involve in the first place, changing the racial and gender demographic of, mm -hmm. of both the students and the staff. And that, that means new voices also come through. Um, that idea of transformation in the university has been strong and it, it's ongoing. It's linked to questions around affirmative action, it's linked to questions around student admissions. That's an ongoing debate. Mm -hmm. The one notion of transformation that's becoming quite strong nowadays is curriculum transformation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you have the black students there, you have the black teachers there, but what are they being taught and, and yeah. who's teaching them? Um, and that's, the for me, the, the transformation that's important and that's where we need to decolonize the, the, the curriculum. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's the one I think that's been missed in the debate. Um, so we're so focused on representativity and redistribution. It's about jobs, you know, giving black people jobs or, or university positions that we're not thinking about the cultural and epistemological knowledge order in a university. Um, whose knowledge counts, whose knowledge matters. Um, at this point, unfortunately, in all South African universities, including the so-called historically black universities, but mostly in the historical white university, there's this problem of a so-called northbound gaze. Um, mm, mm. Everything from experience to knowledge to um, understandings of the world to the kinds of information and material that is deemed to be relevant mm. is produced largely through an Anglo-European, American, German, French tradition. Um, what's problematic about that is simply about the centrality of the culture, which culture is central. In, in France, French culture is central. Mm. The curriculum is French. Mm. The rest of the cultures are extra, they're additions, mm. they're other civilizations you learn about. Mm. In South Africa, where blacks are a majority, Africans are a majority, you have the complete inverse. Mm. Western perspective is dominant. An American perspective, American theory, uh, including critical theory. I mean, um, German constitutionalism, for example, in a law faculty, um, French political philosophy, 
mm. very dominant, mm. Mm. central to the curriculum. Uh, African perspectives are come at the end. Mm. That's, that's problematic. Okay. So, Alfred, you both, you and Yaakov, have been nodding your heads. But considering then from a jurisprudence point of view, how would you then consider transformation? And can you add something to what Joel has said? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I agree. And I think um, university um, intakes are very low in our country. And I think that we have to have a say in the kind of education that we have been given. Yeah. Um, for me, the concern, um, we are people who are concerned with justice, who are concerned with equality, who are concerned with the historical legacy of, of racism in this country, mm. and so too of, of, of um, gender supremacy. Mm. Um, and so the transformation for me will always entail um, a, also a broad way of understanding the connected nature of all of those things and the way in which they can manifest in, in the university and to eradicate them, to fight against them. Um, and, and yeah, that, that, that's mm. really what, what it would entail. Um, we're from jurisprudence, so jurisprudence is a study of law that is political. Yes. Yes. So that would mean that we have to see the way in which law itself has largely, at least for the apartheid government, functioned as a structure that legitimized and actually operated apartheid through law, through legislation, um, through giving uh, judges power to be able to give down a racist judgment. And so for jurisprudence, it's really about deconstructing the law, understanding the ways in which it continues to reproduce these kind of ideas about racism, about sexism, and so on. Mm. So for us, jurisprudence, would mean really transforming not only the curriculum but more specifically to our context transforming law um, and, and the constitution but considering that we're speaking about law now there is a whole notion of post-apartheid jurisprudence yes. also. what should that entail are we there yet or are we still struggling to get there we're still struggling to get that we are contesting. We are contesting the idea that there is even a post. And so post apartheid South Africa doesn't assume that um, apartheid is over. Mm. We are con it's, it's a, it's a um, philosophy or at least a, a, an area of thought in scholarship that tries to contest the notion that we are now living in a rainbow nation, that apartheid is no longer relevant. But it's also um, a, a philosophy that tries to show the sophisticated way in which apartheid has actually um, reinstigated itself within a private sector now. Mm. So we may not have explicit apart in the form of laws and so on uh, that are racist and so on, but certainly in the economic arrangement of our country, in the social political ideas about blacks, in the power, racial power and privilege of white people, we still live under uh, uh, an apartheid organization, an apartheid um, kind of um, country. I'm going to come to that. Mm. There's a lot that we need to talk up, um, sure. about coming from there. But Yako, very quickly, from, from your perspective then, and especially from the perspective of the EFF, I mean, without a doubt, when the EFF came onto the scene, there was, I mean, even when I speak to my students initially, first year, second year, they say, oh, EFF, no, never, that man is a madman, Julius is a madman, you know? So mm -hmm. how, how, even, I suppose, uh, the, the way in which the EFF is going to be viewed is also a process of transformation, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so a political transformation, understanding the different uh, manifestos that are up for grabs, or basically what yeah. you're proposing. So in your understanding, e from a political party, a student campaign political party, and of course, generally, just as a white person in a very black South Africa, how do you understand this whole concept of transformation? Well, um, what Joel mentioned earlier is kind of exactly the summarization of how the EFF themselves want to achieve change at our universities. Mm -hmm. The main focus definitely at the moment is the curriculum transformation. Obviously, the EFF speaks of issues on that their ultimate goal when it comes to tertiary ed education is to make it free and uh, qual good mm -hmm. quality for everybody, mm -hmm. which is a noble goal, which already alone, to me, if you speak about people saying that the EFF wants to give people free quality education, they immediately uh, get ag aggressive about it. They, they, they take mm. a defensive stance against it and say that it's stupid. How, do, how are we going to pay for this? Yes. Thing? That is not the question. Um, but to me, with regard to the curriculum change, is exactly what um, uh, Joel mentioned with regards to when you go to Europe. Now, as a philosophy mm. student, and I'm studying philosophy and I'm in my final year now, I haven't encountered any African philosophers and I've, I'm at my final year. Mm. So to me, my, it, it is a deep concern to me because before we talk about the transformation of the university's curriculum, we first have to breach this epistemic racism that is a barrier, um, almost like a, a hub around the curriculum. And this hub, with regard to African knowledge, is that they don't consider it to be a valid source of knowledge. Mm -hmm. They don't even consider it to be knowledgeable. And that's the type of racism that we're going to have to attack. And um, we're going to have to start addressing it. The sheer fact that they be still believe that 
knowledge and education was non-existent before Europeans arrived in Africa is, is absolutely bizarre and silly. Mm. It's, it, to me, it's just simply you don't know your historical facts. Um, and so the EFS Student Command is trying to raise these particular yes, issues. Yes, our, our main goal yeah. for this this year, at least, is to start driving this radical ideal that mm. the university must start addressing the issues of how we are going to um, make this curriculum change. Uh, now, mm. for us to, to, to drive the fight for free quality education, not our fight to fight on campus. Mm. That is our comrade Outside, yeah. and Malema's job in Parliament. <laughs> um, but um, here at the university, at least, we will continue to encourage students to start questioning things. Uh, the apathy of politics is, is, is tiring. Um, mm. It's getting old. It's stale now. And, and students are starting to get tired of it. They're asking questions around these things. Why aren't we not receiving education from our continent? Why are we not reading African mm. Philosophers, African politicians, African economists. There are many of them. So, to me, I always find it to be interesting when we're in these meetings with different departments saying that we cannot um, just simply do these things because uh, where do we get the people to do it? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, to me, the question is there are people. It's just you don't have the will to find them. Okay, and we're, we're not training them. And we're not training them. Yes. And I think it's also about the university environment. The university is an intellectual hub. And I think at the center of an EFF politics and certainly other movements on campus, such as the Intraces Forum, uh, um, there's a focus on conscientization, mm -hmm. on making young people understand the way in which they hold obligations mm -hmm. to building a new South Africa. Yes. And that that, in, that entails that they understand at least the nature of the world that we live in South mm -hmm. Africa today mm -hmm. in complex and nuanced ways, to understand the way in which history in which power plays a role in constructing our reality. So it's really about invigorating students to take politics seriously. So politics is not just about going to parliament, it's not just party politics, it's about a concern with justice, it's about a concern with equality and understanding our responsibility uh, to, to, to ourselves, to each other and to, 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 to uh, you know, as citizens in this country. Yeah, well, we have to go to a break, but I just want you to think about this particular question yeah. and that you think students must get uh, conscientized and they must actively participate, but if there isn't that um, education around the, the issues that need to be addressed and if they feel that they're in a monolithic culture as many students feel mm. at the University of Pretoria mm. Mm. how then do you get the students to come out but think about yeah. that we'll see you after the break